This is a list of the tool command language functions that are available in the Extreme XOS operating system for scripting calls using the dollar sign TCL invocation. There are some very powerful functions here with some that bear pointing out. The L search function, see if a list contains a particular element. This function allows you to search through variables and look for certain patterns. The L sort, this allows you to arrange your list. A list like we saw in the CLI out split example in earlier in the module is a list of elements. Sort allows you to arrange the list of elements. Split, we saw an example of this function earlier in the module. Split allows you to take in a variable and split it into a list based on a split element that you give it. And in most cases, XOS scripting uses the new line. The L index, this is another function that bears notice. L index retrieves an element from a list. So using the L index function, you can retrieve elements from the list that you created with split or sort or join. This is a list of operators available to the Extreme XOS operating system. If we recall from earlier slides, operators allow us to evaluate and, man and manipulate variables or strings. Control structures. Control structures. Your if control structure and your while control structure. We will step through the if control structure first. It's a conditional execution structure. What that means is if in parentheses the expression or evaluation is true, then execute the statements preceding the then, else execute the statements below it. If we recall from our match function, this is where you can embed a match state, where you can look for a matching occurrence or use a not match and look for a not match occurrence, then execute your if statement. The while loop structure is while something is true, do the statements embedded in the while. So while, encapsulated in parentheses, while that expression is true, do the functions. Nesting is supported up to five levels. Nesting is when you have, for example, the while loop, and then inside the while loop you have if, if structure. Inside that if structure you have another while loop. Inside that you have another if or while. You're allowed to go five deep. That's what the Extreme Access Operating System supports. And you can use the Control C key function to break out of any running script. Here we go deeper into if. It's a basic conditional command. This if structure conceptually is true for almost all scripting and programming languages. If true, execute x, otherwise execute y. In the example, you see line 1, if the variable x is equal to 0, then we set var x1 to var is 0, and then we show it else set var to var is not zero and then we show it. So if x is true, execute y. So in this case, if x is zero, then we execute the set variable command and we give it a value of var is zero. If it is not true, then we set the var x is not zero and then we end our if. Here's a real-world example of an if in use. This is in the grep script, which can be found in the extras and also was the script that we ran for the demonstration video earlier in the module. It simply states, if temp is true, then show the variable current. This is a real-world example of a while loop in action. 
As we stated before, while is a conditional value and it's based on a changing control variable. So if we look at the line one of the while loop, our control is the variable count is less than the variable length or len. Then we step through our script and do our functions. The while loop in this case is basing itself on the length of the variable that was examined. Now the script in its entirety with the while loop, the if, the control structures, the CLI out, the length examination. So stepping forward through the script line one we are setting our variable to CLI out. This instructs the operating system to capture the next CLI command that it observes. Line two is a function to capture the argument value one. Line three, we are setting the var len, which is to represent length. And we're invoking a TCL function and we're having TCL examine the length of CLI out. This is done because in the script we can't be sure how long the variable will be. So in this case we're setting the len variable to examine the length so we can programmatically examine the length for our control. The next line four we're setting the var user list just creating a variable that's an arbitrary name we're also invoking another t a tickle function. We're using split, just like we examined in prior slides. We're invoking, we are passing split CLI out and telling it to split on every new line. We're setting another control variable of count and we're setting that to one. And here we see our while loop in action on line six. While count is less than length, do the following. If we step back up to line three, we can see that that len variable is very important and using a tickle function again we have programmatically told the while loop how long to run based on a variable element so basically you can't be sure how long a command is going to be how long a variable is going to be so through line three we are establishing that length programmatically and intelligently while back to line six, while count as less than length, do the following. Line seven, we're setting the var cur to represent current. We're invoking the tool command language function l index, and what l index does is sets the variable cur to pulling the user from the user list the element of count, which starts at one. So if we recall our split output, we had that numbered indexed list. The count is the index element that the script is going to from user list. Line eight, we set var temp. We're using the regular expression examination and we are invoking the all, which means everything. We're looking, we're using the CLI argument value 2, and if you remember from the example, in the case of the output, that's uppercase T time, and we're telling it to look for that in current.